in our journey through Proverbs so far, we've been seeing that chapters 1 to 9 is the grammar, you know, the instructions for heavenly wisdom, and then chapters 10 and following are the vocab of heavenly wisdom. We're going to look at Proverbs 2 today, but I thought I'd read to you from the vocab. And in chapter 12, there's a number of uh, bits of vocab that really connect with what we're going to look at in the grammar today. They are intimately connected, of course, this language of heavenly wisdom. Proverbs 12, verse 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but one who hates correction is stupid. The good obtain favour from the Lord, but he condemns a man who schemes. Man cannot be made secure by wickedness, but the root of the righteous is immovable. And Proverbs 12, verse 28, There is life in the path of righteousness, but another path leads to death. This is the word of the Lord. I love that line from the book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where Arthur says, it's times like these, I wish I'd listened to what my mother told me. His friend Ford says, what did she tell you? Arthur says, I don't know, I didn't listen. And it seems for many of us, doesn't it, that we, when we're young, our parents know nothing. And as we grow up, our parents know a lot. Well, when we get to Proverbs chapter two, we've just met Lady Wisdom. And, you know, the whole of Proverbs is a father speaking to his son. That's the kind of mode we're meant to hear this, a father urging his son. And he's introduced his son to Lady Wisdom. But now in Proverbs chapter 2, we come back to the voice of the father encouraging his son. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you. And of course, this is really God addressing you and I, or if you like, this is Jesus addressing you and I as a counsellor who knows us and loves us. And he invites us, verse 2, to turn our ear to wisdom and apply our heart to understanding. Indeed, to call out for insight, verse 3, and cry aloud for understanding, to look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. Now, it's a wonderful thing. God has, God has given us grace. God is saying, if you seek what I am freely offering you, verse 5, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Uh, how do we fear the Lord? We seek the fear of the Lord. We prayerfully ask, Lord, help me to fear you. Lord, teach me your ways. Because God is freely holding out the fear of the Lord and the teaching of his ways. We need to ask him with a sincere heart and he will give. Verse 6, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He's a shield to those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. And the, the, another result, not only will you understand the fear of the Lord, you also, verse 9, will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path, because wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Uh, we are saved by grace alone. We are led by grace alone. The Lord leads us by grace. And the, the question is, will we... Uh, seek out this grace that he holds out to us and be led by him or not. Someone gave a great illustration today. We, you know, we might stand um, in, in a beautiful, at a beautiful view over the Blue Mountains or another beautiful view and we could be standing there and the view is absolutely awesome but my glasses are covered with muck with sleep that's come out of my eyes and some mud from the trail and all that and I'm like it doesn't look all that good to me. And you might say, Dave, clean your glasses. And I might say to you, oh, you're being a bit legalistic. No, no, that's crazy. <laughs> um, God is not, not being legalistic by, by saying, search for He's being gracious. He's saying, clean your glasses and see the wonderful grace I have for you. Grace not only to save you, but grace to lead you and teach you and direct you. 
Verse 12, the benefits of this. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who've left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. And why do we need wisdom to be saved from men of perverse, uh, who, of perverse speech? Well, because perverse speech is not just about swearing. Perverse speech is about taking good words and twisting them, taking good words like reconciliation or justice or uh, good words like um, liberation and actually twisting them, good words like freedom and twisting them to advance evil agendas. And it takes deep wisdom to see people using these good words in evil ways. It's not easy to discern that. It's not easy to avoid it. Verse 16, wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words, who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. Surely her house leads down to death and her paths to the spirits of the dead. None who go to her return or attain the paths of life. I mentioned the adulterous woman in our last devotion. She's one of the negative women in Proverbs. Of course, Lady Wisdom is one of the positive women. There are positive and negative women in Proverbs, as there are positive and negative men. But what's the similarity between wicked men and the adulterous woman? Their words. They both use words in ways that lure people from God's path and to destruction. And we need wisdom to actually realise how words are being used to deceive us so that we would walk in God's way. So, so we need to ask God for this wisdom. We need to say, Lord, please make me wise. Lord, please teach me the fear of you. Please protect me from those who would use good words in bad ways to deceive me. Please protect your people. Those are the sort of prayers we ought to pray in light of Proverbs chapter 2, which is a wonderful chapter, isn't it? It's a wonderful chapter showing us the joy it is to walk in God's ways. I do want to make a couple of comments, further comments about this in terms of application. And the first one of those is that Proverbs chapter 2 is wisdom, not law. What I mean by that is this. Uh, wisdom is a different kind of communication than law. So in, uh, in the book of Exodus, for example, the Lord says, If you do this, I will bless you. If you do this, I will punish you. That's law. It's black and white. Wisdom is, wisdom is a little bit less like that. Laws are set in concrete. Wisdom is a little bit more flexible. So, for example, there's a proverb in Proverbs that says, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. And you might be a Christian saying, I raised my child as a Christian, and they have turned away from Christ. God didn't keep his promise. The Proverbs doesn't work exactly like that. And there's a helpful, so Graham Goldsworthy has written a helpful series of books, and one of his books is called Gospel and Wisdom. And what he does in that is he reminds us that Proverbs is one of the wisdom books, but Ecclesiastes is another and Job is another. I mean, Job is a righteous man who suffers. And you think, how does that square with Proverbs? But he calls Proverbs the perception of order, Job the hiddenness of order, and Ecclesiastes the confusion of order. See, what Proverbs is giving us is true principles about how the universe normally works. But as we live in this fallen world, the universe won't always work in this way. Sometimes a righteous person will be deceived. Sometimes a righteous person will be harmed. Perhaps they might live in Afghanistan. Perhaps they might live in Ukraine. Sometimes a wicked person will prosper. Think of the leader of, of North Korea. Think of Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe. Sometimes the wicked will prosper in this life. And, and sometimes the perception of order doesn't fully reveal all the things that are going on. And we need books like Ecclesiastes and Job to give us a fully, uh, if you like, a, a full um, dimensional view of wisdom. There's one comment. 
Here's another comment. Proverbs 2 is clearly about God's people. It's clearly about God's covenant people. Because verse 20 to 22 finishes this way. Thus you will walk in the ways of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be torn from it. The key word there is land. Remember God made those promises to Abraham that he would give him land offspring and blessing. That is a place, a people uh, in, in blessing with God. Well, and you sometimes think about the Old Testament being the promises of God's people in God's place under God's rule. That is land, offspring and blessing. Well, ultimately in the New Testament, God's people is Jesus. God's place is Jesus and God's blessing is Jesus. And so we could actually reread these words. For the upright will live in Christ and the blameless will remain in Christ. But the wicked will be cut off from Christ and the unfaithful will be torn from Christ. You see, ultimate wisdom in the New Testament is not about being secure in our house or secure in our job or secure in our even in our human relationships, although we may enjoy those things as God's blessing. But the ultimate security that wisdom offers is to be united to Christ and safe in him, united to him in this life and blessed forever with him in the next. So friends, why don't we cry out to God, make us wise because to be wise is to come to Christ, to learn from Christ, and to remain in Christ until he comes again. Amen. Amen.